Hello and welcome, my name is The Finest Answer, this is Battlefield 1, and in today's weapon review, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Perino Model 1908, the new long-range LMG available to the support class in the In the Name of the Tsar DLC. As per usual for weapon reviews, we're going to be talking about the unlock requirements of the different variants available, we're going to be talking about the stats and properties of this weapon, as well as compare the different variants to each other, and other available LMGs or weaponry available as infantry player in Battlefield 1. And last, but certainly not least of course, we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of this weapon when playing on the battlefield. However, as we always do, starting off with the unlock requirements, in this case, they're relatively easy. In the case of the low weight, you're going to have to get 40 kills with the MG15 low weight variant, as well as 10 squad resupplies in a single round. Relatively easy to complete there. If you wish to unlock the defensive variant of this weapon, you're going to have to get 50 kills with the Bar M1918 Storm, one of the strongest LMGs the support class has access to as well as 20 kills with the M1912 Reiter Pistole. That being said, having unlocked this weapon then, well, what are these stats? How does it perform on the battlefield? Well, as baseline for today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the low weight variant of it. It comes with a maximum damage of 23 and a minimum damage of 15, netting it a 5 shot kill all the way out to 30 meters, a 6 shot kill from 30 to 38 meters, and from 39 meters onwards, you're going to have to get 7 bullets into your target if you wish to down them successfully. The fire rate on this weapon is very modest, to say the least, at 450 rounds per minute, whereas its muzzle velocity is excellent for those longer range engagements at 820 meters per second. Its magazine size is extremely large, to say the least, at 120 rounds per minute. However, its reload times are a little bit more on the complicated side. And the reason I say this is because this weapon essentially has multiple strip clips laid on top of each other, which will eventually just use up one by one. And as such, reload mechanics are a little bit more on the complicated side. What you need to note, however, if you're going to reload the actual strip clip that is currently in the weapon, so you have to actually take it out and replace it with a new one that's going to be a relatively lengthy reload that's going to take you 3.8 seconds if you're simply adding another strip clip on top of the already existing stack well then your reload time is quite modest at 2.43 seconds for one strip clip for every additional one you're going to need a measly 0.83 seconds so reloading this weapon in case that ever was an issue given its huge magazine size is relatively comfortable unless you're actually a perfectionist and want to have that max 120 bullets in the magazine and 101 is not enough. Moving on then from the reload times to the recoil, this is where, as you would expect, a long range LMG to shine, and it does, with vertical recoil of 0.2 and horizontal recoil to the left and right of 0.12. This comes paired with a very low first shot recoil multiplier at 1.25. Now, spread mechanics on this weapon are quite interesting, as they always are with LMGs. You've got a base ADS that's aiming down sight while not moving a VO.18, an ADS while moving, quite standard, at 1.02, and relatively abysmal hip fire at 3.75. These, of course, being the base values, because upon your second shot, you're going to have a first shot spread multiplier applied to your spread increase, both of these values being negative, meaning, of course, that your spread jumps quite massively. Now, in the case of the Perino Model 1908 low weight, your first shot spread multiplier, both while ADS or hip firing, is negative 5, meaning that the amount of bullets you're going to have to fire to come back to your minimum spread is 7, giving it somewhat of a mediocre spread model that you're going to have to deal with. Now, its spread increase per shot at 0.102 is also somewhere in the middle. Essentially, as with all LMGs, this weapon is going to start off extremely accurate, then become extremely inaccurate, and slowly become more accurate, returning to its maximum accuracy once you've fired your 7th bullet. That out of the way then, let's move on to look at the low weight version and compare it to the other available version, the defensive. Now, there's not that many differences between these two weapons actually. That needs to be said initially, and probably the, the most influential is the most noticeable. And that is while the low weight, as you would expect, comes with iron sights, the defensive variant, once more as you would expect, comes with a optical sight. Now, usually optical sights are an absolute nightmare to use because they just wiggle all over the place and make accurate shooting absolutely impossible. However, because that wiggling is essentially based off recoil, and because this weapon has so low of a recoil, if you up the magnification of the defensive variant, it becomes manageable. I wouldn't say it becomes ideal, but it certainly doesn't hinder the performance of this weapon at medium long range, to the point where I'd say it's unusable. Now, another difference that these two weapons have 
once more, very predictable, given that we're looking at a low weight versus defensive comparison, is recoil decrease. The low weight obviously beats the defensive here, coming in at a recoil decrease value of 10.002, whereas the defensive can only sport a value of 6, meaning, of course, that the low weight will lose its recoil once you stop firing the weapon much, much quicker than the defensive variant will. Another difference between the weapons, of course, comes in the spread department. As we previously said, you're going to require 7 shots to get back to your maximum accuracy minimum spread on the low weight. That is one shot more on the defensive because of course it has an ADS and hip fire first shot spread multiplier of negative six versus the low weight negative five. Interestingly enough the spread increase per shot is better on the defensive somewhat negating the negative first shot spread multiplier difference. In other words whereas the low weight will return to its maximum accuracy a bullet sooner at its maximum inaccuracy it isn't really any different from the defensive variant. They are both relatively similarly in accurate on their second shot however the low weight will return to its maximum accurate state one bullet sooner than the defensive variant will the last difference to point out here is spread decrease once more the low weight takes it home here with a value of 8.925 whereas the defensive only sports a value of 2.975 i would argue however you shouldn't take these values into account too much when deciding which of the two variants you wish to use because this is an lmg you're either going to be firing 30 shots down range or you're not going to be firing at all you're not going to be burst firing an lmg if you actually know what you're doing so ultimately the decision mostly comes down to whether you prefer iron sights or whether you prefer the optical preset and if you're willing to put up with iron sights there is some minor advantages that you can use to your advantage that out of the way then how do these weapons compare to the general weaponry in the support class and in Battlefield 1? Where do they perform best? Now, in case it wasn't already obvious, this is not a close quarter orientated LMG. For a matter of fact, this isn't even a medium range oriented LMG. This is an exclusively long range orientated LMG. You can kill people close quarters if they're unaware of where you are. You can kill people at medium range if they're absolutely horrible at the game and don't know how to shoot whatever weapon they have accurately but really if you want to technically use this weapon at where it's best from the stat perspective you're gonna have to use it at long range well what are you competing at long ranges with them with a 450 round per minute LMG that's going to require somewhere between six or seven bullets to down a full health target well, you're competing with the long-range SLRs such as the Mondragon Sniper or the Sebslada M 1916 or God forbid, the Zebstada 1906, Sniper or Factory, or even worse, you're competing with one of the Scout's weapons, which can down you in one shot by giving you a headshot, by you being in their sweet spot damage model, or they'll just quickly pop out of the cover that they're hiding behind for a cheeky second follow-up shot to fully down you. With that kind of competition, you'd have to be packing some serious DPS to make up for what you're coming up against. And the 1908 simply doesn't have that DPS. For a matter of fact, the Mondragon Sniper, not the best long range weapon out there. The Scout's weaponry is better at long range. The Zeb Slider 1906 has better range damage, but nevertheless, a frequently used longer range self loading rifle. It has a faster time to kill at any range you can put these two weapons up against. Close quarter, medium range, long range, it doesn't matter. The Mondragon Sniper will always win a one to one engagement. For a matter of fact, assuming perfect accuracy on the Perino model 1908, the Mondragon can actually simply miss a shot and still has a better time to kill than that of the 1908. And that's assuming perfect accuracy on the 1908 at longer range, which because of its spread model is physically impossible to achieve. Somebody who's going to claim that at 75 meters, you are not missing at least your second and third shot because of the exacerbated spread that all LMGs have to deal with is probably just just lying to you. So really you end up with a weapon that has, yes, a great magazine, really low recall, but so rubbish of a DPS and poor spread attributes for long ranges that it really doesn't make sense for it to actually be a long range weapon. It's losing out against most of the long range specialized weapons in any distance, even at its long range specialized distance. It can't keep up. And don't get me started on the scout class because they will dominate any LMG player using a long range LMG. And this leads me to the conclusion that essentially I'm handicapping myself with this weapon no matter how I use it. Now I can already see 
see people in the comments going, well, both of these weapons come with a bipod slash tripod to make this weapon essentially a laser gun at all range, eliminate spread or the non-existent recoil problems. And you'd be absolutely right. My counter to that would be, well, why don't you just use the Mojicon Sniper with its bipod problem solved? Or, God forbid, you get out something like the Parabellum, the Madsen MG, the Bar Telescopic. All of these weapons come with bipods or bipod variants with DPSs that far exceed that of the Perigna model when bipoded. If you're a bipod player, this weapon isn't good for you either. It's just putting out too low of a DPS. Yes, it's better when bipoded than when not bipoded, but if you're comparing bipod to bipod, you're still gonna lose. This weapon ultimately is good for taking out targets at long range that are not aware of your position. That's what it's good at because you don't have to fear somebody firing back at you. However, any weapon can be good at that. Literally any long range weapon will perform that task just as well for a matter of fact better. And there's longer range LMGs out there with big magazines as well. If that's really what you desperately are aching for then just use something like the Lewis gun. It's not 100% long range, but it's long range orientated and it'll do a lot better in those medium range engagements. Furthermore, it comes with a suppressive variant, which means that you can actually have a proper optic on it, which of course helps massively at longer ranges because you can actually place your shots perfectly accurate on your end of the equation. Of course, you're still gonna have to deal with the spread mechanics that come with the LMGs. Long range LMGs, on the basis of their spread models implemented universally by DICE are a little bit of a contradiction and giving them such a low rounds per minute, such a low damage per second means that they are essentially useless. That's my conclusion at least, that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Perino Model 1908 down below in the comments as well as of course your usual video suggestions. Leave those down below or hit me up with them on Twitter. But with all that being said, of course, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 1 video.